Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercies are everlasting, and his truth endureth for generation to generation. So we will enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For our Lord, he is good. His mercies are everlasting, and his truth endureth for generation to generation. That that little one is like a round. I mean, there's no ending on it. You just have to put one there, okay? Welcome to the reading of the Word of God, the ever-faithful, never-failing, wonderful Word of God. And we are blessed with a brand new day that is called March 9th. March 9th. Oh, hallelujah. And we are marching on, aren't we? We are marching on. And we are in Numbers, Bamidbar, chapter 11, picking up with verse 24. Bamidbar, Numbers, chapter 11, picking up with verse 24. And I found a wonderful little confession-type prayer for believers, and I thought you might be blessed to hear this. So, Lord, we offer up this prayer, this confession, this stating what we believe, stating our faith, and we are overcomers because of it. We are overcomers because we believe that my body is a temple for the Holy Spirit, redeemed, cleansed, and sanctified by the blood of Jesus. My members the parts of my body are instruments of righteousness, yielded to God for his service and for his glory. The devil has no place in me, no power over me, no unsettled claims against me. All, I'll say that again, all has been settled by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, all settled. I have overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of my testimony. And I love not my life unto death. My body is for the Lord and the Lord for my body. And because of that, we know we all belong to the same body of Christ. He is the head, and we are the body. Now, can you say amen to that? I mean, can you even type it out? Like, like you etched it in stone? Hallelujah, I can. I say amen to every one of those words. That's what I believe, and that's what I intend to live for. Day by day, doing better every day, doing better. So let's return <clears throat> and begin the wonderful reading for today in Numbers, Bamidbar, chapter 11, picking up with verse 24. And there is just so much in this chapter. Wow. Let me grab a quick sip while it's hot. Let me state again on this day that we are together as part of a body for Israel. Let me just say that God, God, Father of all, told Abraham, I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you, 
I will curse. And that's from Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. Started right out in the starting book of Genesis with this declaration from God. So he is the one leading their IDF army over there. His right hand is who will prevail. <clears throat> thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, thank you. So, returning to Numbers 11.24. You ready? So Moses went out and he told the people the words of the Lord. Now, what were those words? What were those words? Let me quickly look here. Uh, <clears throat> Moses uh, said to the people, Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow, and you shall eat meat. For you have wept in the hearing of the Lord, saying, Who will give us meat to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. It wasn't well with them in Egypt. Therefore, the Lord will give you meat and you shall eat. You shall eat not one day, not two days, not five days, not 10 days, nor 20 days, but for a whole month until it comes out of your nostrils and becomes loathsome to you because you have despised the Lord who is among you and have wept before him saying, why did we ever come out of Egypt? because you wanted to be saved and redeemed out of the mess in Egypt. Okay, so let's return to March 9's reading. <clears throat> the Lord came down then, after he got all the elders and the people and placed them around the tabernacle. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took of the spirit that was upon him and placed the same upon the 70 elders. And it happened when the Spirit rested upon them that they prophesied, although they never did so again. How about that? Never did so again. It was a one-time evidence, apparently, for them that they had received. But two men had remained in the camp. The name of one was Eldad, and the name of the other, Medad. And the Spirit rested upon them. Now they were among those listed, but who had not gone out to the tabernacle. Yet they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad, are prophesying in the camp. So Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, one of his choice men, answered and said, Moses, my Lord, forbid them. And then Moses said to him, Are you zealous for my sake? Oh, that all, and we could say that today, all the Lord's people, were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. And let's remind ourselves, he did on Pentecost Day. They all received in the upper room. And then they went out. And now any believer can be filled with the Holy Spirit, called the baptism of the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Tongues. You have a tongue that's going right now. I'm, mostly I'm speaking to English-speaking people, and that's what our tongue is speaking. But at any time when you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, ask the Holy Spirit to come in. You can use and be used by the Lord God to pray in an unknown language, one you didn't learn, one you were given as a gift to be able to pray in. 
so that he has total control. He has control of your tongue. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. And I pray that you all repent of your sins, ask Jesus into your heart, and then ask to be filled boldly with the Holy Spirit. What did I just say? I know what I just said. Holy Spirit, fall on them. I don't know what language. But it was a plea in prayer from my heart for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So here Moses confronts Aaron and says, Are you zealous for my sake? Oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets. Not only baptized in the Holy Spirit, but a prophetically speaking person. And that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. And Moses, Moshe, returned to the camp, he and the elders of Israel. Now, <clears throat> here comes the other part. A wind <clears throat> went out from the Lord, and it brought quail from the sea and left them fluttering near the camp. About a day's journey on this side and about a day's journey on the other side. <clears throat> well, how many miles was a day's journey? I can't tell you, but just imagine it. If they walked two days, Imagine all of the land they just walked on, filled with quail. They're complaining they don't have meat. Filled about a day's journey on this side and about a day's journey on the other side. All around the camp and about two cubits above the surface of the ground. We're talking deep now in quail. And the people stayed up all that day, all night, and all the next day, and gathered the quail. He who gathered least, least, gathered ten homers. And they spread them out for themselves all around the camp. But guess what? Because doesn't it sound to you like greed? Oh, get, get more, get more, many as I can. Something happened. Because God was not pleased. But while the meat was still between their teeth, before it was chewed, you got this picture? Before it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was aroused against the people, and the Lord struck his people with a very great plague. So he called the name of that place Kilbrot Hatavach, which because there they had buried the people who had yielded to craving. There's the sin, craving. And Kilbrot Hatavach means graves like buried graves of craving. From Kibrot, Hatava, the people moved to Hatzorot and camped at Hazarot. And we move along to chapter 12. And then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman, and they didn't like it, and they spoke against her. Now watch carefully, because we need to watch our words. Watch what happened because of those words they spoke. So they said, Has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? Oh, and the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very humble, more than all men who were on the face of the earth. Very humble. 
even though he was a great leader. And suddenly, the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, come out, you three, to the tabernacle of meeting. So the three came out, and then the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both went forward. And then he said, oh, listen to these words. Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. I speak with him face to face. Face to face. Even plainly and not in dark sayings. And he sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant, Moshe, Moses. Confronted with that question, don't you imagine right now they are regretting their thoughts, their feelings, their words? God has called them on the carpet, we would say, in front of the tabernacle. So the anger of the Lord was aroused against them, and he departed. And when the cloud departed from above the tabernacle, suddenly Miriam became leprous, as white as snow. Her skin changed, and here's this disease. And then Aaron turned toward Miriam, and there she was, a leper. So Aaron said to Moses, Oh, my Lord, please do not lay this sin on us in which we have done foolishly and in which we have sinned. Please do not let her be as one dead whose flesh is half consumed when he comes out of his mother's womb. I didn't know they could be born with it. So Moses cried out to the Lord saying, please heal her, oh God, I pray. And then the Lord said to Moses, if her father had but spit in her face, would she not be shamed seven days? Let her be shut out of the camp seven days, and afterward she may be received again. So Miriam was shut out of the camp seven days, and the people did not journey till Miriam was brought in again. And afterward, the people moved from Hatzorot and camped in the wilderness of Paran. What a scary time. And we move right along to chapter 13 of Bamadbar. Numbers, chapter 13. <clears throat> and the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers you shall send a man, everyone a leader among them. So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran according to the command of the Lord, all of them men who were heads of the children of Israel. Now these were their names. <clears throat> and I just might mention, uh, here where I am, we're having a bad 
a thunderstorm at the moment. So I'm praying the lights, everything stays on. But I'm just telling you, you could pray about that. Uh, it's rained all night long. <clears throat> now these were the names of these men. From the tribe of Reuben, Shammuah, the son of Zachor. From the tribe of Simeon, Shapat, the son of Hori. From the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Yetnachach. From the tribe of Issachar, Igal, the son of Joseph. From the tribe of Ephraim, Hoshea, the son of Nun. From the tribe of Benjamin, Palti, the son of Rapu. From the tribe of Zebulun, Gadiel, the son of Sodi. From the tribe of Joseph, that is, from the tribe of Manasseh, Gadi, the son of Sushi. From the tribe of Dan, Amiel, the son of Gamali. From the tribe of Asher, Setor, the son of Michael or Mishael. I'm not sure how they would say that. From the tribe of Naphtali, Nabi, the son of Vophshi. From the tribe of Gad, Geruel the son of Mahdi. These are the names of the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land. And I repent, say I'm sorry for any and all mispronunciations. And Moses, Moshe, called Hoshea, the son of Nun, Joshua. And then Moses sent them out to spy. Can you imagine that? God wants them to go spy. Spy out the land of Canaan. And said to them, go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains. And isn't that something to, to be able to say, go up into the south? <laughs> but that was it. Go up to the mountains and see what the land is like. Whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are forests there or not. Be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. And isn't this something, because God knew all of that, all that he told them to go up to see, but he wanted them to see. So they went up and they spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Rehob, near the entrance of Hamat. And they went up through the south and came to Hebron, Ahimon, Sheshei and Telmai, the descendants of Anak, were there. First, we'll say people they saw, were the giants. God, no wonder God said, be of good courage. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And then they came to the valley of Eshkol. And there cut down a branch with one, one cluster of grapes. They carried it between two of them on a pole. I've always tried to imagine how big we're talking about. Carried it on a pole. And it wouldn't have knocked the grapes off. I mean, I can see they would have shared the weight. A lot of wisdom there. They also brought some of the pomegranates and figs. The place was called the Valley of Eshkol because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there. And they returned from spying out the land after 40 days. Now they departed and came back to Moshe and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at 
Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. They were amazed. Nevertheless, oh, I hate to see that word come along, don't you? Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there, the giants. The giants. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. And then Caleb quieted the people before Moses. So they must have Everybody turned to each other. Wow, did you hear that? I mean, did you see, did you see the size of it? There must have been a lot of instant exclamations about the report. So Caleb quieted the people before Moshe, Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But guess what? But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Those guys forgot that God was with them. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants. The descendants of Anak came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. So these other guys discourage the whole thing. You know, it's so much easier to pull people down than it is to, to pull them up. So much easier. And sometimes it's the ruin of a very good plan, which that's what they were saying. Here they're carrying back this amazing fruit. And God has said, go up, spy it out. I'm going to give it to you. God was testing them, I think, don't you? Testing their faith. And they came back in the flesh. Oh, they're giants. They're big. We can't go. We can't do it. We leave you right there. But you don't have to stay there. You can go right ahead and read your own Bible and enjoy and look things up. Have yourself a time. Let your faith be built up. That's my whole heart. That's why I'm here. We move right along to the New Testament, and we are in the second gospel called Mark. And Scott taught us, they call it Mordecai. Mordecai, we are in chapter 14, picking up with verse 22. Mark, chapter 14, picking up with verse 22. And here we are in the middle of the Passover. We would say the first communion. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And Scott told us that if you were to have all of the understanding of the Greek, that Jesus was not blessing the, the bread. In reality, 
he was blessing the Creator for the bread. Let that sink in. And he said, take, eat. This is my body. And then he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And they all drank from it. Now see, there you are. Nobody was saying, oh, well, can you pour a little out? I'm not going to put my lips on it where you had your lips. No, well, they all drank from it. Now, did they wipe the edge? Maybe. Doesn't say so. And he said to them, This is my blood. There was no trouble drinking his blood. Was it, was it wine? Yes. But was it his blood? That's what he prayed. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. Oh, and thank God, you could put your name on the end of that sentence. Shed for many, shed for Jane, shed for Connie, shed for Melissa, shed for all of you, all of you. Assuredly, Jesus says, I say to you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, I mean, they all had this da, 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 kind of hanging over them. The atmosphere was getting tense, but they sang a hymn. And then they went out to the Mount of Olives. And then Jesus said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, and we are going to quote Zechariah chapter 13, verse 7. This is what Zechariah was given to prophesy way back in his day. I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. Zechariah, chapter, I got 13, I hope that's right, verse 7. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. So he's also telling them there's going to be a resurrection. He's going to go before them into Galilee. And Peter said to him, Even if all are made to stumble, yet I will not be so. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, Peter, that today, even this night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. Now, Peter would not have been able to settle, taking that with a big, bold Peter. Because his response is pretty bombastic. Pretty bombastic. And by the way, this business about the rooster, Scott tells me we're not talking about cock a doodle doo But they called the man who was the crier, we'll say, every morning. They called him the rooster. Probably because his job was like the rooster. Start crowing at sunbreak. Okay, what did Peter have to say? But he spoke more vehemently. If I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said likewise. They all had a heart to believe that's what they were going to do. But listen up. And then they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. And he took Peter. James and John with him. 
And he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. And then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch. He went a little farther, and he fell on the ground. And he prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. And then apparently getting a hold of himself. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. And then he came and he found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And we know that, don't we? Again he went away and prayed and spoke the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And then he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? <clears throat> it is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise and let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, with a great multitude, with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now his betrayer had given them a signal, saying, Whomever I kiss, he is the one. <coughs> Seize him! and lead him away safely. As soon as he had come, immediately he went up to Jesus, to him, and said to him, Rabbi, Rabbi, and kissed him. Kissed him. And then they laid their hands on him and they took him and one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And then Jesus answered and said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But, the scriptures must be fulfilled. And then whew, they all forsook him and fled. Now a certain young man following him, having a linen cloth thrown around his naked body. And the young men laid hold of him. And he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. <clears throat> now that deserves some prayer there to get a good understanding of what was just read. I'll leave you to it. We move right along to Psalm 52. Psalm 52. This is another one coming from David, given to the chief musician. 
who composed music apparently, and the description says it's a contemplation of David when Doeg the Edomite went and told Saul and said to him, David has gone to the house of Ahimelech. So listen to these terse words from David. Why do you boast in evil, O oh mighty man? The goodness of God endures continually. Your tongue devises destruction. Like a sharp razor working deceitfully, you love evil more than good, lying rather than speaking righteousness. And we have that beautiful little word, Selah. They would have stopped. <clears throat> they would have prostrated themselves. You love all devouring words, you deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy you forever. He shall take you away and pluck you out of your dwelling place and uproot you from the land of the living. Selah. I mean, these are very terse words from David, aren't they? The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him, saying, Here is the man. Woo! Can you hear that thunder? <clears throat> Here is the man who did not make God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. But I, David says, am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will praise you forever because you have done it. And in the presence of your saints, I will wait on your name, for it is good. So listen how David strengthens himself and builds himself up. That's what we should do. Wonderful example for us, David. All right, we wrap up today's reading with Proverbs chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. Proverbs 11, 1 through 3. Dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord. Lying then, isn't it? Doing, weighting the scale more and then lying to you. But a just weight is his delight. When pride comes, then comes shame. But with the humble is wisdom. The integrity of the upright will guide them. But the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. You're either going to be humble and honest, and have some wonderful integrity and be known as an upright, truthful, wonderful person. Or if you get into all that perversity, lying, cheating, but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. They won't destroy themselves. The circumstances are against God. Their circumstances have been what Satan wanted them to do. And so there ends up destruction. Let's be forewarned by God's amazing word. <clears throat> and let's pray. Father God, we are so grateful for your word. Oh, my. We are grateful and we thank you once again. We thank you, Lord, for life. We thank you that you woke us up that we were able to come to you. We were able to watch our, our clocks and so many arrive right on time with your Bible, ready to hear, ready to do. <clears throat> and want, uh, let, 
I'm going to throw in the prayer, Father God, uh, since I mentioned time, help us, Lord, in America <clears throat> to, turn, to put our clocks forward tonight so that tomorrow morning, well, it, I know your cell phone will just automatically do it, but it'd be good to set your, if you use an alarm, make sure it's where it should be. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you have given us. We thank you for your rich, wonderful word. We thank you for Holy Spirit, how Holy Spirit guides us and, and instructs us and, and just brings out the understanding for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for baptizing people just filling them full, filling them fresh today with the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes, that we might have wisdom and guidance. We bless you for it. We hold up Jerusalem, Lord, and we pray for her peace. We pray for Israel, Lord. <clears throat> we pray that they will listen to you, that they will let you guide them, that they will not get fearful and be caught up in some kind of a deal. Precious Lord, <clears throat> we'd ask that you would be with those that are being held as hostages. Precious Lord, help them. Help them. Such pressure. Who knows what all is going on as a captive. Oh, precious Father, be with the IDF <clears throat> as they battle on. Please, Lord, be with the IDF. Give Bibi Netanyahu, the Prime Minister, and the IDF and the Knesset all wisdom from you and let them know that they know that they know it's from you. Don't let them be deceived, precious God. We'd ask, Lord, for comfort. Comfort to all the people, all the families who have lost loved ones, and some of them were, were so tragic. Some of them deliberately tortured in front of their very eyes. Father God, only you, only you can bring healing for such a terrible, terrible, terrorist moves. Precious God, bless your people. Father God, we hold up America and others are holding up their countries or countries that they feel led to pray for. I also feel led to pray for Kenya because I've been there so many times. It's my family up there. Father God, <clears throat> I pray for America and I'd ask, Lord, that you would deal with the lying, with the unrighteousness that is at the top of our nation at the moment. And Lord, our hearts are that you would bring it down, replace with people who are righteous, are honest, haven't done deals for money, aren't conniving, lying to the rest of the people. Precious God, please, we'd ask that you would do something. <clears throat> we repent, Lord, and that's what you want us to do. We repent of being very complacent, not powerful and rising to the occasion like we really should. We repent, Lord, and we'd ask that Holy Spirit, you would help us to become much more courageous, to stand up boldly and proclaim truth and stand for it, no matter what, willing to give our lives if that's what happens. Strengthen us, Lord, to live bold, strong, righteous lives for you. For we see the storm clouds forming. 
we also know that you are coming. When? We don't know. Jesus doesn't know. The Father hasn't told him. When, he's, when the Father's ready, he'll send him immediately. And this time, <clears throat> don't believe anybody that says, Oh, come and see, he's here, he's there, he's out here. No. Second time. Not a baby. He's coming in the clouds with power. Power. Bursting through the sky. Coming back down, I believe his foot's coming down on the Mount of Olives exactly where that foot lifted up and left for heaven. That was Jane. That, that was not the word. But I believe that. And when? Just be ready. Just be ready. Be repentive all the time, every day. Keep your slate clean. Keep it washed with the blood of Jesus. And to all that, Lord, we add all of our personal prayers, prayers for situations and people, and then we cry the hearty, Amen, Amen. Have a great day in the Lord. Love you all so very much. God bless you. Bye-bye.